Okay, so maybe we can uh, we can start. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, to greet this morning Irene Gamba, uh, and just a few words about about uh, about her. As well, she, you know, she's a wonderful researcher. But in fact, we we also uh, had the pleasure to have her as a as a, an organizer here of, of the event. She she made she made a, a very big deal of the of the work of organization. So. I forgot to, to thank uh, all the team yesterday, so this is a, this is a way to... <laughs> thank you very to, much. Okay, so uh, you will speak about uh, uh, some issues uh, uh, about the role of the Boston gas mixture system. Please. Yeah. Thank you. I apologize. I didn't change the title. I, I, I keep on, you know, you, you really the lecture and, 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 and the first thing you should do is to really the title of that is exactly what I forgot. Um, so I'm going to be discussing, uh, I, I changed the slides, so the conference is slightly different because it's got more of a different audience. Although there are certain things I may want to show you as we um, move forward. So I, I, first of all, I want to thank very much Milana and, and you, you, because all the heavy work of this workshop was done uh, by them. We, we communicated, I was kind of an external advisor. And, and we sat and we talked about things, but, but they really uh, put together a lot. And as I said to those that were not here yesterday, Milana is not here because she's delivering a kid in two weeks. So a boy. And so <laughs> that is, uh, is a issue what has a really volume priority, I would say. <laughs> but uh, OK. So, so um, I want to give credit also to my collaborators. The work I'm going to be talking is has been done with Milana Pavic Chovic. Um, uh, she's at Novisad, and um, a recent piece that uh, is going to be uh, is with Erika de la Canal, who's sitting in the audience, who gives the last lecture this afternoon, and I will say where her work enters. My former student Ricardo Alonso, who have been very active, and and we've been revisiting many issues of the of the box migration as a whole and we are starting to move into different aspects of mixture. So, so okay, uh, red is kind of dark gray, um, green, I'm not sure it's going to be very light, but I, well, whatever, it's, it was a lot of holes in the lecture, but you were not sitting here. So, so particles have different masses, uh, but, but and, and they are rendered with different sizes, but the size is going to be the same. And, and so what I want to show you, the, the way we understood how, I mean, Milana came and she, she knew about mixtures, mixtures well ahead of me. I, I, and um, and I, we started to talk what we could do. And I asked her, you know, is it a proof of really the, the, to solving the system of box migration for mixtures? Can you actually, does, has that been done? And uh, she said, no, it's, a, it's a, still an open problem. And so what I'm going to be discussing is that Cauchy problem for an arbitrary system of species. And it's a mixture. Okay, so what we're going to have is you have a number of mixtures, say I am going to be giving you a full complete existence theory uniqueness for the mixture. It's actually quite remarkable that in PDE theory we would, we would call that a cooperative system. And it was kind of hard when you try to do diffusion equations that are cooperative. Precisely the cross diffusion has to do with that. But here it falls much more naturally. The, the dissipative structure of the system of Boltzmann equations is amazing. And that's what I will try to show you. And that's what I mean by stability. Like I'm, not, I'm not going to do it yet at the level you discuss it to get it correct, but that's the goal. And this is, uh, we, are, we, are, we are starting to develop things, but, but you guys are, are ahead of us. And so um, it, it may be very similar, maybe that something can be said in addition. Or maybe you did it all. So <laughs> that is, I uh, have to have to look in detail at, at your work, which I learned really just. Now that I'm talking about the lecture of Laurent Huda with this story. Um, so 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 then uh, the system actually for particles, you have the conservation of momentum and and um, and energy, basically um, scale with respect to their prop to, to their masses to the relative to the individual masses. And so these are the classical way to write the conservation laws. And I'm going to draw the diagram on how do you get where the particles go, where they do the mixture, because I think this for us was very illuminating to understand what we have to do. And I think 
And I'm going to stress, because I we have Sasha Bobby in the audience, raise your hand, Sasha. <laughs> Here. And, and all of this would not have been possible without the fundamental work of understanding how to do angular averaging in the, in the, to get the post schema. And, and, and that is what we really try to work out here. And, and that's the thing. And so, so you start with two particles. Um, you get the center of mass for the particle, as they would be with, I mean, they, they are like with the same masses. If you render them with the same size, it's the same mass, okay? All of them have the same size, but, but in the picture. Uh, but if they change the masses, then the center of mass is going to be moving. And the displacement, actually, is towards the the, 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 the displacement of the center of mass vector is going to be towards the direction that goes into the heavier mass, and, and the displacement vector has a, has a magnitude which is proportional to the difference of the two valid mass fractions that correspond from the bigger to the smallest. And, um, and then you want to see where are the post collision velocities. This is something it's also important to understand how to be able to write variables, to do the exchange of coordinates in the, in the, in the, in, in, in the theory of Boltzmann. And so what we, what we do is first you know, localize the relative velocity vector. And the relative velocities, I mean, in the system we are parametrizing the velocities in the way we just take one frame for both of them and we change the masses properly. Because that's the way to, to work it out, right? And, uh, and, so, and, so, and so then uh, what we do is the, you, you calculate these velocities by displacing right, the, uh, the, uh, the, the relative velocity vector with respect to the elastic collision. This is something that I learned from you, Sasha, when we did in elastic theory. You always, the scattering angle is always with respect to the elastic velocity. That is your frame with your working frame. And from there you reconstruct all the deviations. And what you do there is the translation of the, um, of the uh, velocity vector right in the direction by the new center of mass. And that gives you at the end the points V prime star and V prime for the mixture when they cut different masses. Okay? For different masses. And, um, and then uh, the properties that, that you have, as we wrote it here, is that you can actually uh, write, I mean, I should say I didn't stress it, but I'm writing here, the pre-collision and velocities then are going to take a form, and this is a, 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 a super formula, it's really a super formula that we need to do all the understanding when you do uh, uh, the averaging, uh, the angular averaging, which is going to say that the gain operator in moments is lower order with respect to the loss, even when you do it for the system. And that is, for me, an instability condition. Okay? It's, it's something that is going to induce a coercive uh, constant in the, in, the, in the loss part of the operator that is going to detect the complete dynamics of the model. Okay? And, um, and so, uh, and so basically, so, so center of mass and relative velocity, I just remind you that this is a very simple formula when you do the simple monospecies because here you get uh, the one half and everybody progresses in high speed form. Okay? And <coughs> I, I remind you this parameter will play a big role. Rij is the two body mass fraction and you notice that this is not symmetric, right? Rji is one minus the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't understand. Can you go back? Yeah. Is there pre collisional or post collisional velocity? Is there is there an involution as uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it is elastic. It, it is elastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much it is an involution? No, no, no. It is a, it's it's exactly a classical portion. In fact, the what okay. what makes it to be Important is a molecular chaos assumption, right? I mean, the, the whole point is, the, you know, kind of the people that derive the Boltzmann equation should derive this as well, right? And, and, and consider the masses to see what happens. So maybe something interesting. Yeah, what I'm going to say, I, in my view, now that I understand it, I don't think it's any harder than the single species. Because you end up repeating basically the whole thing, okay? 
And so, um, and so, so then one thing that I'm going to be stressing is how you represent the energy. And how you represent the energy between center of mass and, and, and relative, and, uh, sorry, between uh, uh, yeah, center of mass and relative velocity. And, um, and these identities, which actually, um, you, you really need them when you do the scalar case, and I will show you, uh, it's very simple because in, in, if you have the masses are the same, you have one half, so, so, so uh, per, per, each of them would be one, so here you have a two and here you have uh, uh, one half, and, uh, and that is an energy identity that Mobilev uses in 97 to do this angular averaging, on which allow you to extend the Bobson lemma, for those that have ever studied that, um, which is in the analysis and the system here of the Boltzmann equation, for any function B that is integral, you do not need to do any cutoff, you don't need to do any surgery near zero, works for all. Okay? All right, so, um, so let me remind you the Boltzmann elastic equation now. Everything is, so, so here I have not written yet the, the, the thing for the system. So in the scalar case, I remind you that in the, in the um, strong form, you put the, the, the Dean operator, the positive contribution is in the, in the preconditional velocity. And this is extremely important because if you say that this is Po and then this is Pre, you change the sign of the entropy. And then you may end up screwing up the stability because, because you would have then in the positive contribution, instead of having an absorption term, you have a source term that actually makes a blow up of the solution or a growing up and if. So that is important. Uh, uh, and the interesting thing is that when you work in the weak form, because the way you form the weak form, this is not like integration by parts of gradients, this is integration of part of the interaction velocities, then you go from pre to, to pass and that actually makes the match. And the other thing is that um, you see the formulas, and I'm going to be working mostly with this expression, and what you get is uh, center of mass and relative velocity with just one half instead of having the, the two value reduced mass, okay, for the system. Actually, you know, for many years I thought that this is a model of mixing of a sim single species. So it's a, thing, it's a mixing, so a billiard, you can call it a billiard mixing, right? It's actually what we think of it on, 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 on or you see on the table, is that the things that are moving, they start to mix, right? So what we want to get is to the billiard mixing of mixtures, and that's what I actually put in the abstract, and I actually have put that in the type, in the type which is a little bit more common, okay? So, um, so, so we start then from the elastic theory, and then you write the weak form, and this weak form has this double um, convolutional uh, structure in a way, uh, so it's not a single convolution, it's a double, so it's a triple product, and you can see there's a lot of literature even for studying the theory of these objects, and, and that is something that uh, uh, becomes into a game on the work, work we did with Ricardo Alonso, the former work of uh, Villanian Co, and, and it's going to be the, the subject of uh, Erika's lecture this evening, uh, this afternoon. And, and then, but, but the important thing is that that way encodes all the information about the dynamics. The first part says, you know, this is a binary mixing. If I actually take this, this weight as this integral, right, that, that already is, is, a, is a, it's not a convolution because you have the different, another integration, but it's a kind of oscillatory weight that actually multiply F and the translation of F like it would be, in, and that is what makes it to mix, mix it. That is why it works. That is why it is equal to the Boltzmann equation. It's really on that structure. And so, and so, so the, on the other hand, this, um, this um, structure is very handy to check uh, collision invariant because you may say, well, anything that nullifies uh, this integral, this uh, G is a collision invariant, in particular, if you take the uh, um, conservation of mass and, and energy and you test with these polynomials that correspond to a collision invariant, that would give you that these are zeros. That comes in. And then, in addition, you get the H theorem, which is, of course, well observed by Boltzmann and, um, and, and the Boltzmann inequality that gives and Boltzmann theorem that says that if this quantity is zero, then this log of F needs to be a polynomial 
that has only the collision invariance, and then if f is going to be in a one, that the quadratic term has to be negative. And that's how the Gaussian arises as a as a natural and stationary state. Uh, okay, so 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 what is in the system, please? In the system, um, uh, what we have is um, I'm going to have several species. They are all going to be uh, talking to each other through the fact that I have um, I equations of particles that are, it's a billion mixing of the, with themselves, but with the I minus one particles next to them, capital I, right? And then the, what, what I can do, I'm going to start in, introducing this notation, which is to write the equation of the system as a vector value uh, um, um, uh, yeah, system, like an algebraic system, on which the matrix that corresponds to to the collision at form contains all the uh, particle particle interactions, even with themselves or with the different masses. And, uh, and then fi is a vector value function with this capital F. So, so if I use capital F, it's a vector value. If I use a capital Q, it's a, it's a matrix. Okay? And uh, <coughs> so the collision operator has, uh, you can uh, write it in a strong form. And, uh, and in a strong form here, I keep on forgetting changing this, and whenever I come to a lecture, I realize, but when I go there, it's what did I have to change? This prime, which I like to do that, I mean, even if it is elastic, but it reminds us where it is, uh, they should be on the left, okay? Which, for me, mark correct, okay? So, uh, so the, there will be no uh, mistake. Although, as we pointed out, it's reversible, and if you know it, you know it, but if you have to teach it, it's a little bit more difficult to, to do it without the, the change of variables, and that has been working for me, I guess, and for the students. <laughs> we discussed that endlessly many times. Okay, uh, the collision cross-section now. Um, so we said that, I, I, I want to put the caveat, we sent with Milana um, a, a, a paper for review, it was a good review, and, and they asked us whether uh, one could actually, and we put the same uh, B in an infinite, and, and the same gamma. And, we have, and, they, and they asked us whether the thing could be changed. And in fact, I have told you that I really think it works, but we have to do it. And in fact, we did in the revision that we did, we, we did it uh, kind of rushing, we extended it to B I chain in L1, and these are different values. So you can really take as, as good as you want. Everything is there. It's going to be covered. The only thing is not covered is what is called the non cutoff a case where B is non integrable, and you have the. Well, you know, it's an important problem because the, 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 the limit to Landau, the mixture of things that really matter, learn on the non cutoff case. So eventually, some of these ideas may fall when one we understand at least how to do it. So again, you have seen this picture. Now I'm writing the pre-collision of velocities in terms of um, the velocities and, 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 and two-body mass fraction. You start to get all of these objects. And, uh, but what matters is um, the, um, well, OK, I revise it for you, the weak formulation. The weak formulation remains the same. You have symmetry with respect to the interaction in the collision, uh, in the QHA collision operator, and you have the collision invariance uh, um, for the for the mixture as well. And so, and so, in, uh, so, so you have the conservation of the total um, of the total uh, mass, but you know, uh, adding up the uh, so, sorry, it should be a sum and um, and. Uh, and uh, the, all the species as much as the mean velocities and the energy, and you have the classical entropy written down in the matrix. So, so why is this weak form written differently for the, the reverse <coughs> collisions there, the J-I term? Right. No, so no, no, no. Should it still be the same weak form? That's it, that's it. Yeah, this is, okay. So here is a, when, when you have in the weak form, this the primes would go into the uh, the, yeah, the primes, so I'm, I'm reading the two things. So the first one is the prime went now to the post. And that's exactly the, the, the punchline. Right. That you write it in a strong form, it's in the predicate operator, 
now the, gain oper the contribution that comes from the gain operator, because this is positive if, if the test function is positive, but the test function will be anything, right? It's going to be, uh, uh, be evaluated in the past. And then to get the conservation loss, you just look at these objects, okay, balanced by their own, by the collision invariant associated with their masses, and that is going to be zero, and so you add them up, and that gives you the natural conservation mass momentum and energy for the, for the whole system, as much as the entropy, okay? Because you have to balance the, the two uh, temperatures with respect to masses and so on. Okay, so just let me do a very quick, very quick revision of the uh, Cauchy problem for Boltzmann in, in the single species, and I tell you how we extend this to the multi species. So, in the case of the single species, uh, <coughs> the balance space that, that, that used to, the handiest one is uh, the to use the L1 with Lebesgue space. It's natural, it's a space of observables. I mean, F is a probability distribution. You, you may call that moments. You may call whatever, the, that's a probabilistic mo word, right? Or the thermodynamic, it was introduced, the, these are the observables or the thermodynamic quantities associated to the system. And, uh, and so this is the natural space, and so solutions have to be in this space. Uh, when we actually, uh, we, for, for, for um, convenience, what we do is we, we look at the positive moments, and if they are going to be positive moments, we just denote the k moment is actually being multiplied this uh, square root by 2 times k. All right? And that is very classical in the literature. Uh, the other observation is then, okay, so then I can state the theorem that one uh, can, can do, and, um, and it's the Cauchy problem for a homogeneous Boltzmann. Uh, this has been uh, starting to be studied <coughs> yeah, initially, I think there's a proof of Kahneman, uh, where he does it for local in time with a few moments, I mean with polynomial moments. Then it goes to archery, that is able to do global in time solutions, then it goes to, to, uh, it goes to an infinite, then enters the work of uh, Debilet and Pepper, and then at one point it was it is very well understood. There was always the issue on how to do the post -Nagema. And this is going to be the punchline. Okay? So the, the I I would like just to say that we we have been we are writing now a review paper with um, with uh, Ricardo Alonso, where we are adding a few things that have to do with LP and so on, and we are sort of revisiting the existing theorem using what I like to call a game changer, which is the work of Bobby in 97. Okay? That I really, um, I really learned it from you. I mean, we, we learned it when you came to Austin and, and we did it for the inelastic theorem with Vlad Pankfarov and so on. For me, this was no group. The, actually, the motivation, I believe, of uh, what, what Sasha from our conversations is, uh, he was reading that paper, actually proved something that is very, very profound. And it took many years to do the same thing for a larger class of cross-section. In, in, if you take hard spheres in three dimensions, you can take B constant. It's going to be 1 over 4 pi or 4 pi or what's it constant. Okay. So, so what he wanted to do was a question that was posed to Arkery uh, by, by, by Arkery to Sasha is, is it true that the initial date of the Boltzmann equation is an L infinite that property propagates? Can you actually do that? And, um, and, and he embarked into that, and he, he, you, you didn't get into that uh, final question, but he produced something that is that if you start with uh, initial data that is exponential, that has an exponential moment in a one, where the weight is not a polynomial weight, it's an exponential weight, that property propagates in time globally. And that actually, I, we use it a lot for getting error estimates when we do, for instance, spectral methods. And it's a very, very, very important property because you really control the dynamics of the homogeneous equation and you will know based on your initial data, what is going to be the decay. It's not quite an invariant region, it's that you take just a two more moments of the initial data. So you enlarge it a little bit more, and it works wonderfully. And it's actually, so, so that is a thing. But let me tell you what is, what, what, what is really, in, in my view, it changed the way of understanding the post -Nalema. 
uh, is the following. You basically um, look at the weak form and, and you have this, because if you're going to be actually doing moments, you're going to be testing by the Lebesgue way. The Lebesgue way in the web equation theory is called the Japanese bracket. And I keep on asking Kazuo, why is the German now? Nobody knows why it's the Japanese bracket. Apparently, some Japanese people use it in the web equation 20 years ago, and the way people call it the Japanese bracket. But it, in our jargon, you go to papers of 20 years ago, and it's called the level weight, <laughs> which is the typical way that makes a nesting of the of the Banach space. You know, if it is, if you have a, a K and you have a zero, then you have all of them you would need, and that is very important. With a nice estimate, and so and so so what 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 Sasha did, and I and I said in if I gave this lecture I said well we left but here's here so so <laughs> it's hard to he basically he, you do the following you have to decompose this energy in the the, the, the pre um, the post uh, V and V star in a very clever way in a way that when you actually are going to take polynomials of order k, this quantity cannot be larger than 1, proportional to the energy to the k. And that actually improved all the previous work that were used by the French school and where you do all the surgery and cutting off the zeros and so on. And that uh, basically is done <coughs> in the following way. And you know, it's very easy. In, that, in fact, if you look at at such as paper and elastic theory, this is a one line recasting. It's a, the thing I wrote to you before. I write it as, as two times the, the absolute value of the center of mass plus one half of the energy, and that makes it. When we tried to do that in Milana with the system, we, we really couldn't see what was it, how could we make it work for the mixture, for the different masses. And so we have to do a re, very careful recasting, and a posteriori, I can tell you what the recasting is. It may be silly, but what we basically do is the form. You need to find, to split this identity that comes up when you take the, the, the because in the, the energy you take the test functions on the absolute values, and we put there the Japanese bracket, the, the same thing would be if you want, if you take absolute value, which is what uh, Bobby Lev used in, in his paper. Um, but the recasting is the following, I split that, so take the energy as a common factor, this is going to be very important. That is going to be multiplied to the, to the k, the order of moment, or the 2k, whatever you, you are, the, well, it's actually, yeah, the, because this energy is going to be 2k. And so, and so here what you have to have is a convex combination, two numbers, p and q that are, uh, that add up to 1. In this case it's 1 half. And then here you have to have another vector or, or another quantity which is a convex combination proportional to this v b prime which actually have to be also this part is smaller than one and it's very interesting that you observe here that these two need to be identical. So this was what we need to do for the mixture and it took us a while but we managed to, to get it. And uh, so essentially this is what you're going to see in the mixture later on. So what I did, I recast it this very simple formula into this form. And once I pass into this form, the next slide, which is what uh, was uh, calculated by, by Bobby Lev, flows naturally. And no matter if the masses are the same. Okay, and I will show you how was this recast done here. And so, so basically, what you have here is uh, essentially that the weight that corresponds to the gain operator if you're actually taking positive moments, it's a positive function, right? And you're taking absolute values and so on. That is going to be, um, if you take um, the, the Lebesgue weight or the classical absolute value, then you get exactly this formula. And what happens now is that this spherical integration becomes an integration that you parameterize in terms of the cosine of the scattering angle, and that is going to be two quantities that are always under one and which of them under one half. All right, and that actually makes it. And so in the case of a, a monospecies, 
you immediately find that this quantity here, this integral, we call it gamma k, and that's proportional to the, this is the gamma that comes from hard potentials, and that is the energy to the k. And that actually is, a, the gamma k is something that is strictly decreasing, and so, so basically you say, I mean, this is the way I interpret it, that the energy and data in this is a convolution and structure in the angular integration, and that is mixing. That is the birth of dissipation of the, of the equation. Uh, the condition going to k induces a global stability condition because it's going to be, and as you see later, is actually what dictates that the, that if you do hard spheres or even, uh, well, in the case of maximum molecule, you have identities, but, but if you do hard potentials, uh, I mean, with gamma positive, basically is what, uh, what comes in the, the terms that comes in the, in the loss term, and it goes uh, to the decay rate, um, <clears throat> goes to zero at the rate that depends on the, on the integrability property of, the, of B, and if B is bounded, then you have a polynomial K, so if B is in a linearity, you have a polynomial K, if not, you know it decays, but you don't have a rate. Okay, and that is an important uh, component. So basically, it says if you go deep enough in moments, uh, and, and you see what happens here. So then you form the moments equation, and it's very interesting, and I will not go through the details of the moments equation, but that is a classical binary calculation when you use, uh, now it's a, people like to talk about binomial expansion, paraproducts, and it's a sum of, uh, of, um, of an expansion of, of, of products of moments, on which you prove two things. First of all, with this gamma k that you collected from the positive part of the weight, because it's less than one, and you are subtracting the loss, right? The loss needs first a Jensen's inequality, which you have in L1, and gamma is positive. That actually is going to be doing this shifting, and, and well, you have the shifting first by, by lower bound that depends on gamma, but then here you have one minus gamma k because you borrow back gamma k factor from the loss, put it on the gain to do this binomial expansion. And what you get there is that this term has lower order in moments than that one, if gamma <laughs> is positive. All right. Okay, so then, yeah. Okay, and then, and then you basically end up with an ODE of this form, where here you're actually, Y is going to be the moment you want to estimate. And that comes something very nice, because the loss term, because of Jensen's in L1 with moment, becomes like 1 plus C, and the, and the gain term of B comes has with lower order in exponent. That was actually uh, discovered by Becker. Okay? So what we do here is you extend it, I mean the proof is simpler, and, and you send it to any B in L1. Okay? And, um, and this is what I like to call my coercive constant. And this is exactly what the way you, you call it. I mean, it, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's because it's going to be exactly the coercive constant that uh, it is when you do the linearization. Okay. So, so it's a little bit more than so. So the coercive constant is not just gamma k. It depends strongly on gamma k, but it's one minus gamma k times a factor that depends on the initial moment. Okay, which is. Uh, the, the, the lower moment, okay? And, and in fact, you need to have two to generate all possible moments uh, with this formula, and uh, uniqueness you need to have two plus one. So let me skip, uh, so you have the global moments generation and the global moment propagation, but just for me, uh, uh, to find super solutions for this OBE, and that's basically what that is. So, <clears throat> that gives you the, the, the propagation and estimates, precise estimates for propagation as much as for generation. And then, um, and then, we can actually, we have revisited this uh, theorem by using precise. It's very beautiful. It doesn't, you know, why, why do I insist on precise? I mean, I've discussed this with, with uh, such and many other people. It actually became a very nice tool on which you check three properties and then 
If they are satisfied, you know you have existence and uniqueness. This is, you cannot do leeches if, if you have hearts here. If you do, if you do maximum molecule, which is gamma equals to zero, then it leeches one. And, uh, but here, you need these two things. I just want to say up for the people that have been on the business for a long time. The one side of the leeches condition is the de Blasio theorem. And uh, she the uniqueness theorem. She was a classmate of Rezan. They were working on balanced spaces. They worked, she worked on diffusion theory. This is the only thing she did for the And um, and then from by density you can really get uh, to this Cauchy theorem, which you put the, the existence will require L12, but if you want to do uniqueness, you need L12 plus, as in the paper of Bember and Mischler, and that which has used the Bresson approach and then extend it uh, by density to, to the L1, uh, two. Now, you know, if, you, if you're interested in the, in the details of that or whatever question you have, I'd be happy to discuss it. So let me move forward. Uh, because I want to talk, well, and we got the exponential moments exactly as uh, we discussed it with Sasha. And, um, and then <coughs> the LP propagation came up after. Uh, this is something we are revisiting uh, with Ricardo because we found that there are certain gaps in the in the proofs of uh, not, not a gap is that they were saying well this follows uh, in the Villa near Moho in Arma 2004 on which they say well this is they just do it for a piece you have to do it for the weights and the way we do it is very different and it has it has to do with the following the question is this was for moments look and this is a very different equation. Moments says that you have one plus, you have to have super linear in the negative contribution. And you can do that super linear because you use Jensen's inequality, and Jensen's inequality is only in L1. Jensen's inequality is not true in LP. So that cannot be done here. So you have to work a lot to get that. So the loss term is the same order of the, um, of the, of the unknown, of the, of the time derivative of what you want to control. And, and here you have something that is called the gain of integrability, which is to reduce the exponent for the unknown. That was discovered by uh, Pierre Williams and UC in 95, and he does a lot of surgery by doing regularity estimates. Uh, we can remove that, okay? And so we can extend it to L1. So we don't need to do the surgery that is to cut off the angular cross-section at C. I mean, you, you, Jones cannot deal with the, the angular concept when B of sign of series equals to, uh, when, when it gets to, to, to have a global. But, but with integrability, we can. Okay? And that is something that we are finishing in this really paper. So, so the question is can, so, so this is how we make it work. And essentially, what you need to say, well, in order to calculate the things, you just look at the weak formulation and the setting. And, I, and, um, and, and there are two estimates. How do you get the gain of integrability estimate? And the lower bounds is uh, you need to get the lower bound. And, and here, if, you know, the lower bound was Mary Markey. The lower bound that works for L1 doesn't work. You have to work more. And we actually found with Ricardo a way to find a, a, a statement which says it's very generic. And we are using it quite a lot, and we use it even for the numerical scheme because uh, it's a discrete. It works for the discrete setting uh, to get to get global control of numerical moments, and uh, and then uh, basically it says if you have any distribution, it doesn't have to be a solution of the Boltzmann equation that um, has mass, energy. The energy has to have a bound from below, so that means you cannot have concentration, so you cannot be a direct delta. And, um, and moment zero, and in addition you add a little bit of two moments, then you have a, a, a bound, a, a, you have a constant, which I call the CLB, you're going to see the log, which actually controls the collision frequency, which is the, the F times the, the relative velocity to the gamma, or the convolution of the V to the gamma, bounded by the Lebesgue weight to the gamma times this lower bound. And that lower bound degenerates as this C goes to C, okay? Or this data goes to C. So you really need them there. Okay, so once you have that, um, well, I'm, I'm going to skip this. Let me do it. Let me show you how we do it for the mixture. I should say that for the mixture, 
uh, when we started to work, we knew uh, it was just, we were working with just a very uh, new printed uh, version of the had a clear of um, uh, Mark Ryan and Esther Dows and, um, and, and Mark Milana knows them well, knows their work, and so she, she, she we realized it was for the linearized equation, and we said, what can we extend this to the full binary? Or the fully binary. So, so then, you know, you've seen this slide, let me move on. Here it's also. And so here is the conservation quantities again. And then here is the space we are going to be working with. And that is the main, the big difference to start. So how do you choose the space in order to make it work? That took us a lot of time because it was like, like putting a puzzle, right? We have to have a weight in a way that I can do the sharp form, form of the Postman lemma, that I can reproduce the angular averaging that gives me this decomposition of the energy in one. So it was not that you, any weight makes it. Or at least this is what we found. The classical way that people have been doing without this renormalization, or even the renormalization, but just putting the two body reduced mass, uh, fra mass fraction, doesn't work. So it's the, it's the mass divided by the sum of all masses. So it's a renormalization with respect to all masses. Um, and, so, and so then the associated Lebesgue norm that we have is going to be the typical uh, vector value norm for the spaces. Okay? And, and in particular, oh, because we did it with Milana in this paper is L1K, what we do, uh, and Erika will show you that actually you can go to anything. And that's very important for the error estimates. Okay? All right, so, um, <clears throat> so then the moment, uh, you define a moment to be the classical moment, but now with respect to this weight. Actually, I do not know, and that would be interesting for the people that do moments method, whether that weight has an impact in the scaling of the, of the, of the crossroads. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe yes, maybe not. But that, okay, so, but what I can guarantee that with that weight, we do have stability. The, the coercive stability and, uh, and so, and so, let me just say that for that we just use this lower bound. So we need because uh, you see what happens. We will need more moments, and and uh, and um, and then we actually look uh, define quantities that depend on the maximum on the minimum of the um, of uh, quantities. Uh, so this K I J I'm going to define it in the next slide. So hold it for a minute. But the lower bound here actually is going to be depending on so this lower bound that comes from the lemma, and you do it for not a solution of the Boltzmann for the probability associated to all the masses. You take the vector with its masses, and then the lower bound that is uniform for the for the uh, norm of that vector value that contains all the all the uh, the information of the species. Um, you have to put here the proper way is to enter here. The minimum of the of the potential rates as much as the maximum. So the, when you put the bar below this minimum, the bar above is maximum, and that gives you some quantity that you know is going to be positive. If you choose that, you know the solutions. I mean, the, the statement of the of the lemma is. Uh, by, by the way, this paper is posted on our kid and it's under second revision and um, and. Um, and you can find out the details. This particular object is in the appendix, and it's a couple of pages. So it's a, you have to calculate this constant. But they're precise, and you can really trace it. And so, and so, um, so we do then um, an existing and uniqueness theorem, and it works using the Bessan. I mean, the, the, the approach of having this problem, I that the Bessan actually wrote the set of lectures for a CISA a summer school in Trieste, but never published them. They are not complete. And he actually, when he does the checking of the tangential, the subtangent condition for the collision operator misses it. And that is where all the dough is here. Yeah. So, so I talked to Bressan and I asked him why he didn't publish. He said, well, he sort, he sort of knew it was a little bit incomplete. And he said, well, I just use it as a, a didactic tool and so on. But I think it's extraordinary because what we are able to do for the sixth then is to check this this uh, Helder condition, uh, subtangent condition, and one-sided condition, and that gives then existence for the system. So it's a super cooperative system. So the point
point is, can you do the sharp off that? This, is, this was, you know, that was the club and we really spent like three months to get there. So at the end of the day and many tries and so on, with Japanese practice that we found, we were able to recast the energy. The energy meant in this form. And now the Japanese bracket is the MI with, divided by the sum of all of them. That's, that's the whole point. And when you look at that, then, then we said, well, you can actually find P and Q. And aha, uh -huh, I forgot to write P and Q. This is another thing I keep on saying. Okay. But there is a P and there is a Q, okay, that are going to be uh, convex conjugate, that they add up to the total energy. In the previous case, I said they add up to one, but it was one times the energy, okay? So here, you need in the decomposition, P and Q have the energy. And then there is a factor lambda, which happens to be less than one, which is the same for the two of the variables, right, to, to the, the two components that form the, the sum of them would be the energy of the, for, for each binary uh, interaction. And, and that basically that says, you can see here, as mass and P and Q, I'm sorry, I should have added them, and sometimes there's so many formulas, and I obviously decided not to, but, but maybe it would, for this audience it would have been important. But, uh, but, but RJ is the two-body mass and really plays an important role in all of these calculations. And that gave us then the, um, the same result, exactly as written in the moment speech. Okay? And, uh, and the estimate that we get here, right? Now the E, uh, the capital, the energy is embedded in this formula. No, sorry, the energy has. So, so this is going to be the, um, the, this quantity is going to be smaller or equals than, smaller or equals than one. And then we said, well, you know, here we have a problem because I do have, what is this CHA? This CHA, you know, I know it, oh sorry, this CHA is decaying, right? But when you say, why is one in the monospecies? In fact, the monospecies has the fact that you have there, the, um, in, the, in the case of monospecies, you have the, the, um, the only one B. And if it, the integral is not one, you just divide by that integral, take it out of the integration, you risk a time, and in fact you may change the, the, the relaxation time to equilibrium, but you can work without loss of generality with that one. But here you cannot, because they are all different. That's the, that's the change we did after the revision. And, um, and, so, and so in that process, what we, what we, what we, the best you can say is you are going to take a K that is large enough in such a way that you are going to be below the integral of PHA, which I don't know. I mean, I can't renormalize with respect to the biggest one or with respect to the, slow, the smallest one, but you would have many that are not. In fact, as many as capital I square number of and then, um, and then what we basically uh, obtain is the following, that, um, that this sharp mixing, what it's going to uh, tell is the following. You can actually select the, so here was the selection of my uh, K star, which is, the K star is the, is the K that will secure for IJ that this quantity holds. So I select the K star, my K star for IJ. Okay, and then I'm going to, uh, sorry, select the maximum of all KIJs, right? There are going to be a lot, as you will see in a minute. And I'm going to label the R plus, the maximum of the two body mass, the minimum of the two body uh, uh, mass fraction. And, and then I'm going to put a K star, sorry for all of that, but you have to collect all of that. And then for that K star, for which you collect all the KHAs, all the gammas, you know, the max and mins and gamma, and you take that quantity, then you can secure that for anything about that K star, here we have this condition that is valid for all KHAs. Okay? Sorry, A bar. Just think here it should be K, K, K bar here. Uh, here it should be K uh, star. Sorry. Okay? So it has to be about, I know I'm over, let me just say a few things. 
Okay, what is that? What is that? Well, how that depend on masses? This was the most striking thing we were kind of, what does it mean, you know, for, for the monospecies, species, it's a case, it's about two. It's just two, it makes it, right? And, and how do you, for two is one, and for anything about two is less than one. For the mixing, what we did, we said, we, we don't have a clue. And Milana, who's a master on math values, she said, okay, let me check on that. So if this founded, the case of anything, that was the easiest case to do, that we know in the monospecies that came the, the case with the rate, we plot it here. This is a monospecies case, right? Now, if you have a mixture, and the masses are different, you start to deviate from one half, right? If the two masses are the same, both of them are one half, and you have the monospecies equation. But if not, you start to deviate. And if you deviate by one over 20th, from one half, it's not a big deal. You still do fine, it's this purple. But if you go to one over 10th, you are already passing here, and so a safer k would be about 20, right? If you go into one plus one fifth, one half plus one fifth, right? It's not a big deal, right? Almost any mixture would have this disparity. This is order of one disparation between the masses. That actually needs at least 38 volts. So what would happen if you do electron ions? This, these lemmas are not valid as written for pool of interaction. But just if you have to deal with very disparate masses. Well, so here, basically, what we plot is the following, and that's how I like to show it here. And, um, and, and what basically, what we get here is the mass fraction, right? And what would be the constant for that mass fraction? So I actually look at electrons. Electrons have order 10 to the minus 3, right? 10 to the minus 3, it would be... You know, here is 0.2, 10 to the minus 3 should be about here. Okay? And this calculation that I did very roughly, it says that you would need at least 5,000 5, moments. It would be more like 5 million moments. People are actually saying, okay, in the simulation, they basically take a cutoff and everything has final moments and so on. But what really this is telling you, that if you need so many moments, the moments have to be, the electrons have to be, so the, the, the very good mass has to be very tight in the sense that the variance has to be very small. And that's why people that do simulations for uh, mixtures on, at the kinetic level, they actually take ions, which is a very large thing, and the electrons are going to be in a much, much, much smaller scale. And that is the problem of doing these calculations. And I want to bring this to your attention because we started the project with Liu Liu and, um, and, and, and Ji Jin, and I think Liu will talk, you, you will talk about this, right? And it's the first part. And we basically said, well, if you want to compute that, maybe an idea is to make the decomposition, a proper scale decomposition in a step, like it would be a fraction uh, sort of um, a, a, a splitting operator, time, time, integration in time operator, in a way that you can, you know, encompass these scales. And we, with uh, you and, and Clark Penny, are actually working very hard now in the implementation. And so we'll see uh, what happens and so on. Or just, I know I, my time is over, uh, but then we have uh, the, uh, the, the or the E that is there, and then we have the exponential moment, and the LP theory is going to come from something that we did with Ricardo and, um, and uh, Alonso, and, and Erika will explain it, how it works in the system, the whole LP propagation. And I was going to show, but I never have time, that I, we use the L2 uh, propagation and the uh, regularity and, and the derivatives of the propagation to get error estimates and convergence to Maxwellian for its spectral conservativity. So thank you very much. And I expect it will work for the for the system as well. So thank you very much for your thank you. Uh, some picture, pictures and so on. And uh, actually all right, I will not say that. All right. Okay, we have time for one or two questions. Uh, I may have one regarding yeah. the, the the OSL condition. Uh, do you think it's, it still holds 
for the in the mixture case. <coughs> and, and Which one? The 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 one the, the one side dish it's a condition. Uh, do you think it still holds or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there that's are some reasons. Reason. Oh yes, yeah. Actually, that's the the for my view the hardest is the is the. Oh yeah. Because in the it, the subtension condition, you need to really look at the moments, the questions. And basically, what really matters is that you can go always into a decay for which the, the, the moment of the gain is below the moment of the loss. So the moment equation actually is what makes the environment which you right? so, so basically, you have to find what is that k, and then you put it in the definition of the invariant region and says, okay, you will have actually, you need to have at least, for instance, Bressan says it's at least four moments for hard spheres. Uh, that was actually, but he doesn't prove it. Yeah. But because the Helder condition uses the four moments. But actually, four moments work. But in the mixture, that basically means you have to go to all the moments for which you have yeah. the stability yeah. condition. So that could be whatever, 200 moments. And so. You see, I mean, it's a, it's a curiosity because, as I said, numerically, you always cut off text. It's only it's telling you some information on how, you know, that you have to be very careful. And when you get into disparate masses, you cannot keep on doing the same sort of closure. That's what I'm saying. You have to be very careful. This, or when you talk about what is the Gaussian that corresponds to each species, you really need to understand how tight that Gaussian is going to be. That, that's my impression. But, you know, People who have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for, the, for the other species, can you prove that to the positive, uh, positive part of the culture of Britain have some missing effect? Um, yes, in fact, yeah, we, this is what we do. Okay, this is what we did uh, for the. So, with Ricardo Alonso Maya Taskovic, we actually do it uh, for the mono species. And uh, this is what we are working now with Erika, Milan, and Ricardo. And it will be the same. Okay. You know, at the end, it's really the same. It's just one you have the banner space to which you have to wait to manipulate this way properly. Then I, I believe, you know, everything that works falls very naturally. In, in a sense, is that binary mixture are a hyper cooperative system. If you do the conservation, if you do it all. By the way, we are extending this to polyatomic. I don't have time to do that. And we are doing the case of just a single <coughs> spirit polyatomic. And in polyatomic, for the experts in the audience, there is a big issue, which is what is the cross section? Well, we said to the Rihanna, okay, we have a class of cross section on which we run above and below that mimetizes the effect of hard here, so then we can get it. And, and the, the, the two body mass, I mean, they, they don't include the parameters of the two body mass because it's an external variable for them. So, but it works. So, to do a single product, but I now we believe it's even a mixture for the atomic. But the question is, tell us, I mean, we, we don't know. We've been shopping for a cross section for all the atomic. Uh, Milena says there are ones that are very degenerate, that would be going to know, maybe Sasha, you know that, but I. But we do not find it clear with the literature. So we basically say if we have a bound from above and below goes to go to zero, the potential, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, I can do that. L1 it works. And then for the regularization, with regard to what we do, we don't do the surgery, we don't do the, the, the neons, we just do a splitting of putting a little bit. So in the concentration of zero, you put you put a portion of mass and then you put a portion of our mass and then you use uh, different estimates and you have to get the control of an infinite but then you do it for the regularization. Okay, uh, maybe it's time to, to thank Kerry Hay for her talk.